Hey, welcome everybody to uh, today's session of Vantage Point. Can't tell you how much I love that intro. Yeah, I just great, it, isn't it? Yeah. Really sets the stage. And our, our topic for today is how recognition shapes purpose driven workplaces. As always, it's sponsored by our good friends at Vantage Circle. And with me today is my good friend, a writing partner, and I have to say, one of my best friends, Adrian Gostick. <laughs> well, thanks, Jess. Yeah, now we are delighted today to talk about this, you know, and so we thought, uh, who do we invite that has a really purpose-driven organization? So that's who we're going to introduce you to today. Um, and we're going to th think about how HR at all levels can help leaders create workplaces that are more purpose-driven, more appreciative, and more engaging. And so we've got three great guests to discuss this topic. Uh, our dear friend Travis Doster is Vice President of Communications for Texas Roadhouse Restaurants. Founded in 1993, Texas Roadhouse operates hundreds of restaurants in the U.S. and other countries, and now today employs more than 86,000 roadies around the world. Uh, Travis also serves on the board of the company's charitable foundation. We also have our dear friend Paula Edelstein. She is chief people officer of Kitsap Credit Union in Washington State. Paula pays a, plays a pivotal role in shaping her organization's human capital strategy fostering a high-performance, values-driven culture of innovation and inclusion and driving employee engagement. Before joining Kitsap, uh, Paula held senior HR roles at Nordstrom and Weyerhaeuser. Um, Partha Niag, our, our dear friend from India, is joining us. He is founder and CEO of Vantage Circle, a leader in the employee recognition, engagement, and wellness space. He has an MBA from the Indian School of Business, and Partha brings a background in engineering and technology to disrupt the way HR manages employee engagement and benefit programs. So welcome to you all, and we're going to get started right in. We're just going to jump in, and Travis, we'll have you kick off. Uh, our dear friend from Texas Roadhouse, what is a purpose-driven workplace? How do we define this, and why is it so important to, to not only the people who work with us or maybe the people who also walk through our front door, our, our guests or our customers? Well, and I, I got the pun since we line dance, so I got the kickoff. <laughs> uh, you know, we are so fortunate. A lot of companies that start up, you know, maybe they don't know that journey to begin. And, you know, if you set out on a trip, our founder, Kent Taylor, used to say, you got to have a map to get there. And boy, he had the such the foresight um, to I say it's very simple. It's four words, two of the same. Legendary food, legendary service. And so everything wraps around that. If you work in the support center, which is our headquarters, you know, it's about legendary service to uh, our, our operators. And we have over 700 restaurants now. If you work in the store, I don't, if you're the, uh, from dish machine to server to making the roles that we're famous for, it's about legendary food and legendary service. And I think the key, um, I used to say key, uh, Kent was the repeater in chief because we have this mission and it's our purpose, but then you repeat it and repeat it. And, and I like to say, you know, why does the preacher uh, or the pastor preach to the congr uh, to the choir? You, you reach the choir, you reach the congregation. In our company, um, the choir is our roadies and the congregation are our guests. And, I, and we're very mm -hmm. proud to say, I think if you walked into any single restaurant and said, what, what is it? And they'd say, it's about legendary food, legendary service. And then all the other programs, recognition, all of those things build off of that. Um, but if we know why we're here each and every day, no matter where you are in a restaurant in Utah or the Sports Center in Louisville, it all revolves around that. And I love that. When we were working with you and, uh, and Kent, uh, you, you took us on a tour of the first restaurant, and we met some of the dishwashers uh, who, who started at the beginning of the org 25 years ago, right? They're still there. And yep. you don't stay there for 25 years washing dishes, a tough job, if you don't love what you do. Yeah. You know, Kent had such a struggle to start this company. Yeah. Uh, everywhere he'd been, he'd been fired or kicked away because he what he wanted to do. And really what he wanted to do was create – a family. And I, I think that's evident in these restaurants of folks. It's not just a job. Yeah. Uh, in fact, if you, a, a lot of our employees wear on the back of their shirts says, I love my job. And we take that very seriously. Mm -hmm. That's part of our one-on-ones. Do you love it here? Man, do you love it here? And if you say, you know, I kind of like, they always say, you wouldn't say to your wife, I kind of like you. 
I love it. And with love comes passion and with love comes purpose and with love comes, um, you know, you know what you're going to do. And so I know it always sounds kind of hokey, but if you can't just raise that bar, you know, no, you love it here. And now you know how to love it and how to love the guests. And I'll leave you with this. His final thing he used yeah. to say, happy employees, meet happy guests, make happy accounts. And it's really- <laughs> happy accounts. That's a great line. You I know, I just got to jump in because yeah. you said that you wouldn't say to your wife, I kind of like you. I'll never forget when I was dating my, my wife, Heidi. And the first time I told her that I loved her. And I said, you know, Heidi, I just want you to know how much I love you. And she said, thank you. <laughs> not, not quite the response I was hoping for. Well, then I'm glad you got her to finally to the point where she would uh, yeah, acknowledge it. <laughs> Persistent. Yeah, exactly. Oh, he's very persistent. It's just he's a good salesman. Yeah. Hey, Secret uh, repetition, I think. Take a take a page out of Travis and play much. He's, he's, he's for Peter. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Hey, Paula, when I think about you know your background, we're like, for example, at Nordstrom. I mean, is there a company that's better when you think about customer service? What a purpose. Um, now with Kitsap Credit Union. So tell us a little bit about this idea too, then. What does a purpose-driven workplace mean to you and 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 why is it so important as you're trying to attract the best talent? Yeah, absolutely. You know, drawing just like-minded folks where they can, in an authentic way, kind of rally around what the purpose or the mission of the organization is. Um, you know, people connect to making a bigger impact. And so I loved what I heard in Travis's um, example. I heard a lot about contributing to a bigger cause. And I think um, you know, in this day and age, competition for talent is tough and, and people have choices about where they want to spend their time and, and their gifts. And so, um, you know, we're in that on the back of your shirt, Travis, saying I love my job and that being the bar of which we all strive for. Um, that really is signaling um, to your employees about how important their well-being is. And I think, you know, not only do we like to make a, a big, a bigger impact and make sure that our work has meaning, um, but, um, you know, it, it, it provides energy back to each and every employee, which feeds into the teams, which, um, as uh, Travis says, makes our accountant happy. <laughs> but it really begins with with the people, right? And so you focus on the, ra- the rest of it will come. Is, is it, I mean, you think about you, your work, now you're with a credit union, and, mm-hmm. and people who come to work with a credit union, you know, maybe it's easy to think, ah, they know how important our work is, we're giving back to the community, we're a nonprofit, whatever you think. And sometimes mm-hmm. we see this in healthcare. It's like, ah, we know, you know, the patient's the most important, but people forget and, and they just get wrapped up in the day-to-day work. How do you remind them of your purpose? Yeah, we um, as a leadership team really um, have wrapped our arms around and are working to make sure that it shows up in our behaviors that we demonstrate that our uh, member experience will never exceed our employee experience. And so what is it that we can do to really drive home and foster the employee experience? Um, And we're continually raising the bar and getting feedback about what that is. Um, And so, you know, we do we do like most organizations, keep a pulse, get feedback, keep adjusting. Um, But we have our heights um, set high. And I think, you know, as you you talk about purpose driven, a big piece of it and people love being on a winning team. Right. That's fun. Results are fun. Um, but until you make that other connection around connecting the heart, as well as the intellectual excitement about the cash register wrong, it's really the heart that gets people up and gives folks purpose. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, you know, you just put in that extra effort and uh, you enjoy working where you're working, um, spending a lot of time together doing fun work. So, Love it. Hey, Partha, g- give us some thoughts internationally and with your organization, too. What are you what are you seeing with this idea of? maybe a little bit more purpose driven than than just leading with the uh, you know making the accountant happy having the accountant come at the end and leading with maybe creating a little bit more purpose the, the accountant is the result of of the actions which has happened before you know uh, just just uh, uh, slightly changing a question as in like I, I was thinking what Travis was saying and I was thinking how do you align 86,000 people to that purpose you know uh, I mean, they have to be engaged beyond their job descriptions, okay? And I'm pretty sure during the COVID times, everything was locked down, all those things. They had to adapt 
okay and if they had to follow the rule book i mean i'm pretty sure it was not there in the rule book you know for 6 months the restaurants would be closed okay they had to go beyond their job description you know and uh, and they they had to be engaged you know and, and only people who are engaged can think beyond that and the cash the accountants the finance departments will come in later on and that's a effect of all what we have put in there and i think uh, uh the part about you know what uh, paula mentioned about the continuously what behaviors to be uh, showcased okay so that you can continuously communicate the values on a regular basis i think that's where recognition plays a very important role you know i think it has to be aligned to the company values uh, there and see a, a general thing is that uh, you recognize for everything okay but there should be some specific behaviors which you you recognize you know discipline and uh, innovativeness team work or whatever those specific behaviors which you want to uh, drive your recognition program should be aligned to that kind of thing and but those behaviors also should be aligned to the company values now i mean uh, i i gave this example in an earlier show where i said i don't think you want to drive innovativeness in a house cleaning services company okay there you 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 might be your most i mean it is important every every behavior is maybe good behavior is important but not important enough to focus that much maybe you want to focus on timeliness okay on teamwork there so how is it aligned to the company values so when you design your recognition programs i i think this whole purpose i think that's the starting point now what's the purpose what behaviors you want to drive and how are those two aligned i think that's how you need to uh, think about and and i see that happening across i mean when we talk to a lot of our clients as well as prospects i see the thinking coming in that way the focus on the people is is there yeah yeah you know it it is interesting to make sure the messaging is right i think that's you're you're talking about right so so paula uh, let's build on what parthas saying about recognition and the role it can play really in creating that purpose driven culture why is the recognition piece and of course you know adrian and i are, are big on gratitude and recognition and we constantly talk about you know more carrots you know less sticks <laughs> you know more or cuz i said so so talk to us about some of the things you've seen work yeah um you know recognition really enforces a sense of unity and belonging with employees and the way that um at kitsap credit union we tie recognition um to as pertha was saying you know our values and those behaviors that we desire so it 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 reinforces for example by including that and aligning it with our um performance discussions or our um celebrating you know efforts rewarding results conversations and and um activities that we do um that is really about reinforcing that not only are the results important but the results achieved in a way that really aligns with our behaviors and our culture um we are looking at now looking at our core values not only the day show up and things like our performance um and reward systems but really trying to get more engagement from our employees um around how to recognize and take recognition in their own hands against these values so it's an important part of the way um we do our work and and um you know keep the organization aligned excellent excellent well, what would you what would you add to that um travis any thoughts you know the the recognition um as is to me it's like you can you can live it and you can breathe the purpose but the recognition parts the action of it mm-hmm. you know it's easy to say yeah you guys this is a great place to work but well i don't ever hear it or and so we've kind of a couple of areas we have a, a number of just programs um called legendary you where it's at uh, the stores can recognize each other and they they send a digital notes and then but what we want to do is so we have tv screens throughout our biz, our our support center that constantly show uh those digital celebrations so it could be a store saying hey thank you for uh providing the catering so we're those are all throughout the building and then every event that we do we we talk about we got to um um educate motivate and appreciate and so that's through awards but it's through uh um, you know our founders so we have this big managing partner conference where all of our managing partners um are invited we pay for it they're allowed to bring their spouse 
or a significant other. And I asked Kent one time, because we give managing partner of the year and a car and a big check and ring. And, and he said, you know what? I want others to see others being celebrated because nothing better than a, somebody hitting their spouse and saying, wait a minute, that guy just got a car. That girl just got a ring. Why aren't you up there? You need to be up there. And he said, you know, because we take a lot. The restaurant business is late hours, holidays, etc. So I think the recognition, A, and reinforces your missions and your purposes, but also just tells, it keeps that people connection. Um, and, and, you know, we all do it. I, I've heard this from a very wise uh, uh, man who wears orange a lot about how, um, you know, people, they keep notes forever and they keep these notes in these drawers and and I do it and you know those things have a huge impact and so sometimes it's we think it's the big things and a lot of times it's uh, little things I'll tell you a quick story I, yesterday I heard from somebody and said one of my employees worked for another concept for 14 years in that time he never heard from or met the CEO of the company, which that company is about our size. He said he's been here two years and he's talked to, gotten a note from or seen the CEO seven times. Wow. So it's like, you know, our, our CEO writes hundreds and hundreds of notes. And I, well, I just think that pays such dividends down the road, but then also says, man, they're real people. You know, they're not, uh, they're not fake notes. They're, they're handwritten. So, uh, I'm a big, we're huge believers and recognition. I think the misnomer from a lot of people is it has to have money to it. It has to have a gift. Nah, we do those too, but boy, I think it's just that um, somebody else told me one time, kindness costs you nothing. And right. uh, so I think these cards and letters and emails have been one of the foundations of our company. And I'm thankful that we haven't lost that. You know, it's so interesting. Back to Paula, what you said about how it creates unity. You know, mm -hmm. all those things up on the screen from the other places, you know, seeing other things. You know, um, Adrian and I have been privileged to go to a, a couple of your uh, big gatherings. And so often in organizations, the trip is reserved for the high performers, yeah. only the people that hit their quotas. And it was so refreshing to see Texas Road. I said, look, we hit the big number, whatever that number is. And everybody contributed a little in some way. But to your point, you want them to see the hyper. You want them rubbing shoulders with the guys who did it and picking their brains. And, and to your point, you know, having, having the family say, so, so dad, uh, mom, uh, you're going to the Bahamas? <laughs> is that, is, that, is yeah. that on the, you know? And what are you bringing me back? You know, not just a T-shirt. Uh, yeah. so, you know, so it is interesting how that does, you know, done well. And to your point, it doesn't have to be, and here's a check. And here's a thing. So, so Parth, I mean, this is what you do. And so this has got to be music to your ears. <laughs> Absolutely. So, uh, so uh, vendors like us make money when you give more checks to the employees. Right? <laughs> so, 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 so the incentives are not aligned there. Uh, so, so it's a standard number. They say that you should put in 1% of your payroll into the rewards part of it. But we have a fundamentally different philosophy there. Okay, we, we believe that the recognition is more important than the rewards. I mean, I give an analogy. So you go to someone who has called you for dinner, you get a nice bouquet of flowers, or do you give $100 there, right? <laughs> so if you give $100, next day, they'll be comparing what this dinner was just $100. I gave them the best of wine. You know, it should actually have been $250. Okay, why did they give me $100? Uh, on, on that, right? But a bunch of flowers, which is like $25, right? That will have a bigger impact uh, on that. Okay, there, there's, those, those norms are there. But surprisingly, I, I'm, I'm happy Travis is saying that, you know, he's like directly acknowledging it's not the monetary value of it. But so much, we have seen so many companies focusing more on, okay, what's the catalog? Okay, what are we going to give them? Uh, when is the delivery going to happen? Okay, uh, will it take seven days? In the RFPs, we are getting those questions. Okay, we said that's that's like a given and a hygiene factor. Okay, things will be delivered, things will be done. Why are you focusing more on that? Why not focusing on designing the program, which reinforces what Paula mentioned and Travis also mentioned, reinforces those values. What kind of awards do you want to give? Appreciating people not just for performance. You know, everything is not. 
totally performance. You are anyway given your salary for performance. The bonus is there for performance there, right? But sometimes I appreciate you, Chester, being in the company for 10 years, you know, contribution. Maybe you are average, okay. But I appreciate you contributing that effort to the company. It's not purpose, uh, all performance driven kind of thing. So we see all these things, uh, but when companies take it, see how do they decide on their programs, what they have been doing, what they hear from peers, what the vendors are shouting about, okay? It creates a lot of, you know, oh, we are missing out on this thing, okay? So I think uh, the acknowledgement that the recognition is more important than the reward part of, in the R&R part, okay? I think it's the first step. And we see companies moving in that direction uh, slowly. You know, and I'm glad you brought up the uh, the hundred dollars because actually, uh, instead of the flowers, because Chester used to bring Heidi a hundred dollars when he would date her, instead of flowers. So, so that may be maybe where you went wrong there, Chess. Yeah, when I, when I showed up with the flowers, everything got better. Good, yeah. good. I'm glad you learned. Yeah, yeah, that was really wrong. Uh, you yeah. know, what's funny about that. Just that, that part that that was great because as you were talking about that, I just my mental. I went back to Christmases. You know, with or birthdays, my wife's birthday, ironically, you'd say that. And I would try to buy something maybe on her list or whatever. And then to see the power of one of my kids making her just a note. Yeah. Was scribbles and that she's kept forever, and it just would make her cry. And it just, oh. boy, that, just you, that hit me when you said that. It's like, it's not the, and as they've gotten older, I've said, you don't have to buy anything, you know, make her something that she was. So anyway, that was that. I appreciate you saying that. Well, Travis, this is lighting a fire in me. So just one yes. other anecdote. When I was um, working at Nordstrom, I had the pleasure of working with Blake Nordstrom. And when Blake passed away, um, they opened up a, an ebook where folks could write stories and tributes to Blake that his family would receive. Hmm. And to a person, I had my own story. But Blake had this gift of having you be seen and heard no matter what your role in the company was in a way of like, oh, he couldn't possibly have replicated this experience for anyone else. But there were thousands of people he replicated wow. this. And I know when I was um, I had worked with them about um, five months and we were at an event where my my husband was with me. And I said, oh, you know, I got to get home. The babysitters were already longer than we had been. And he just tapped my husband on the shoulder and he said, Scott, so he knew his name. I just want you to know we're so happy Paul's joined Nordstrom and she's doing great. Aww. And so, right, that's just recognition. Those aren't dollars. Um, and it wasn't just me. It was thousands of people. He knew their name. He saw them. He acknowledged a moment. And it's just really meaningful. That's awesome. Yeah. What well, great stories. Hey, um, let's, uh, I noticed we're, you know, about halfway through. So let's, let's keep moving. This has been so great. Uh, Partha, uh, uh, kind of keep going on this, on this idea for a moment, because let's turn to our HR audience who are watching today. How can they maybe help leaders more align recognition, wellness, other benefit programs with core mission, vision, values, how, how can they be maybe a little bit more strategic in, in, in thinking about keeping that purpose driven going? See, I think uh, many times I, I hear uh, the decision maker, the final decision makers of what's the ROI. Okay. Now, I think there is ROI. There is enough data for that, which we can provide. But I think show me one person who doesn't like recognition. Okay. It's sometimes, you know, it's, Paralysis by analysis. You know, what coffee machine should we have in the office? Remove all the coffee machines. Okay, you'll still have your employees there in the office, most likely. So it, it, it you don't have to measure so much that should we have this program or not kind of thing. So it, it's, uh, uh, so that is, I mean, the first point, you know, that recognition, you don't need data. Everyone loves recognition. Even the giver gets a warm feeling when they give out the recognition. Uh, so that's important, right? Secondly, what the data says, okay, look at best of data. So I, I recently had a presentation where I took some data from Gartner. Okay, so Gartner said that recognition improves engagement by eight percentage points, okay, um, on whatever the base was, the eight percentage points engagement. And everyone knows and you need engaged employees, okay, particularly in today's environment. And I think one of uh, the guests had mentioned about the communication, 
getting people are all spread across the globe okay uh, they're working remotely they need to see this i think they need to see this continuously you know getting recognized or at least i mean recognizing is also you are acknowledging that you exist okay so i think that data says that eight percentage points we have seen but the surprising thing is you know uh, uh, what will a digital program like this help okay how will this help we are not saying digital programs is there to replace your you know your recognition programs it is to enhance your recognition program not to replace uh, those uh, recognition programs which you have have in place All, and almost every company has some recognition program maybe not for everyone maybe the top 10 uh people in the company in the annual function you give it out okay maybe the salesman of the month which you do uh, okay that everyone has it but tools i mean digital tools uh, i can i think helps in enhancing this whole uh, program putting the right kind of values and i think i touched upon it in the previous uh, when i uh, this uh, in the previous question you know focus has to go away from the rewards part Okay, I don't have budgets. I mean, you don't have budgets for the rewards, maybe, but for the recognition part, I mean, it hardly costs you anything uh, there, mm -hmm. right? So I don't have budgets. We don't want to implement this thing. So I see a trend coming in slowly there, uh, but I think it's it's it, less than twenty percent of the companies in US has a a formalized you know uh, recognition program there i mean they have those annual yeah. functions and all but not a formalized on a continuous regular program uh, which is there uh, well good thank no no thanks for giving us that oversight and you know paula as an hr professional yourself with a career in this you know a lot, i can see a lot of people you know sitting with a pen ready to say okay what do i do now how do i become a little bit more strategic in aligning my recognition, my wellness, my other benefit programs to really move the mission of the organization forward. So here in HR, we can really make more of an impact. Where, where would you kind of point people to start on this? Yeah, I think it comes down to your intention. So, it, I mean, some things will get through based on your culture um, and the way that you think about things, but really defining. So the presumption is that you do have divine, defined values, right? And, and purpose. Um, certainly, if that's not part of your culture today, a really um, an employee engage high engagement with employees and defining what that is is really important. And then from a practitioner standpoint, it's thinking about all the ways in which so you're thinking about outcomes, what outcomes do you want to achieve? You want to reinforce purpose, behaviors, not just results, values, and then looking at each of your um your levers really that you can pull, whether it's your recognition, whether it's how you invest in education, your formal programs, your informal programs, and start assessing, you know, the different ways in which you can do that. Um, and, and so, you know, the alignment, is, it's not its not hard to do, right? But it is taking the time to sit down and say, where can we make the biggest impact? And it could be as informal as, I remember early in my career when I worked for Warehouser, um, it was um, amount of peer recognition. It was against um, our values of the of the company and how we all showed up demonstrating those. And it was a peer recognition uh, where we all contributed about each team member how they showed up representing those values. And then as we showed up in a meeting that we came together, we were each given a box, and mm -hmm. no name attached to the recognition. Um, but we took that time to just sort through what people saw in us and the way we showed up. And um, I kept that box for years, wow. you know, having a down day, I just want to go back in there and, 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 nice. read something, and that really drives that purpose. So to part this point, doesn't have to have money attached to it um, either. But I think the short answer, Adrian, is just with intention. Well, and I, I, we love, you know, Chester and I, as we've gotten to work with you at Kids Up, we love what you're bringing in. You're bringing in that intention. In fact, one of the things we've seen you do lately is to really define the leadership behaviors that you're looking for at Kids Up, which I think is one of those intentional things that HR can lead to lead to that purpose-driven organization. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we often can look at the um, things like purpose purpose, mission, values, and assume that they're just there and understood. 
And, um, and I think we really want to, um, what we've done at Kids Up Credit Union is as a leadership team, think really hard in partnership with um, getting board engagement, employee engagement, about looking forward just the next five years. And um, let's, let's reassess our stated mission, purpose, vision. What's changed? Where do we need to go next? So not just for today, but for the future. And will this still give us there? And, and we don't expect purpose and, and vision to really move, obviously, very often. Um, but we are um, noticeably rethinking our behaviors or our competencies that we really want to reinforce to achieve that. Awesome. Uh, and Travis, you know, as a business, you know, a partner that, you know, utilizes HR, well, what kind of things would you recommend as well? How does HR can play into this role to, to build this purpose driven organization? I think it's so, so important. And I tell you, I'll give you kind of two examples. You know, after COVID, um, you know, you had a lot of people, um, working from home and, and we allowed that. And, you know, there was that movement to say, let's make everybody come back. Let's make every come. Back. And our strategy was from our CEO was like, let's don't make anybody, let's make them want to come back. Let's make them. And, you know, we, we ask a lot. And so we want this, you know, I love that we're, I love the word intentional. So we have so many programs and, and you know, you're always going to have those people. Oh, why do we do this? I can't believe we do that. For example, we have a gym and we have trainers here. We have somebody that cuts hair. We have somebody, but it's, it's like invest in them. We're asking of their probably most precious commodity, which is their time. And so if we can give them some time back, because originally people were saying, well, you know, if I can work from home, I have more time to do X, Y, Z. So if we can have a cleaners here, we actually just started where we can have your car washed and car detailed and, and, and they pay for this. Uh, some we pay for, you know, blood mobile. It, it gives people that purpose. And Hey, I, I can't run out and give, if, give blood. And so if, if I think it's allowing people to have um, feel like they have more time. And so they don't feel micromanaged or feel that stress. I mean, how many of us have felt that stress? Like I've got to get to uh, this store, this cleaners before they close and take that away. And, you know, we would love and we I've been here 18 years and if we could ever figure out a daycare. I really believe that would be a, a game changer in giving people back some of their time. And then the other thing, um, you know, we want this to be a place their home away from home. And so, you know, we just celebrated our Halloween festival, which to me is one of the most amazing days. We ask everybody to bring their kids and families. And so we try to incorporate families into um, the office. And I love nothing. So I will show I, if you can see over here, I have about six trucks sitting right here. And my office is where somebody, um, if their daycare follows through, falls through, they can bring their kids to work. We just, you know, I think HR and then our business, if we can reduce those those hurdles for folks to say, oh, my gosh, because in this world, honestly, none of we don't all live where our parents did. We don't have that backup. And we find if we can kind of be that backup, I'm, I've never coached anybody and said, oh, my gosh, why is your child here? I mean, what? Like, no, bring them in. That's why I have the trucks. And I love nothing more. I had a meeting the other day and there was a five year old boy in here playing and he played the whole time. And the guy, the person I was meeting with was like, is he going to stay in here? And I go, he doesn't know what either one of us are talking about. But <laughs> I got the nicest note from somebody that works for me and said, you had no idea how that relieved the pressure of my day. And so our HR team does a great job of not looking at you know, it's so easy to go, OK, how many people had their haircut? How many people worked in the gym? You know what? It doesn't matter. Everybody, when they say, why do you like to work at Texas Roadhouse? Talk about our gym. They talk about our cafe. It's we're in storytelling business when we're attracting uh, new employees. So I think my caution would be is to look at those items and say, oh, you can't always measure the return. Um, in dollars and cents, but you can, I always say cents with an S or cents with a C. We try to make sure it's not always the cents with a C. If it makes sense for people to go out and, and be that great workplace and tell their friends and family, then we're in a pretty good place. Yeah. So Paula, you were nodding your head a lot during that. Any, uh, <laughs> anything you want to add to that conversation? 
I just, I love it. Um, I mean, who doesn't want to work at Texas Roadhouse right now? <laughs> um, I love it. Uh, you know, focusing on the human experience, you know, there's a real shift from when I started my career, it was more transactional relationship. And, and now again, we all have choices and we learned, I think we've prioritized in the last few years, if we hadn't before then, what's important to us. And it is our family. It is being seen and being heard. It is recognizing that when we show up at work, we still have life as that other person outside of work. And so the more that we can um, honor, really. Um, and I think that's recognition, Travis, what you're doing. You're you're recognizing and you're, you're showing up um, for your folks and you're recognizing that and you're valuing that. And so I would I would offer you can measure it. And I bet you I would see that in your engagement scores and uh, your recruiting, your retention rate. And so um, I just love what you said, focusing on we all want to be seen as, and recognized as the humans that full our full selves, right? Our authentic full selves and acknowledging that makes us more human, more connected, higher inclusion. Um, it's just really good stuff. Yeah. yeah. Let's stay on that the authenticity theme and uh, come back to you on that, Travis. Um, you know, it, it really is key to building a purpose driven company when you think about it. Right. And your brand has to feel authentic, uh, both inside, you know, your stores and, and, and to the outside world. But, you know, more, more and more important to your people, like you said, you know, we preach to the choir, the choir preaches to the to, to the congregation. If you get the choir, you get the congregation. But talk about how you've achieved that inside and out of Texas Roadhouse. And what, what can we learn from from your people around that authenticity piece? I tell you, that's a word that we use more and more and more every day. Um, to be authentic, um, because it means that, you know, especially for a founder driven company, um, you know, Kent was himself, Kent yep. was Kent, you know, and for for the audience, I mean, he showed up in, in jeans or he might show up in shorts, I'm wearing shorts today and flip flops. And he, you know, he just, he was who he was. And I really so happy that we've kept that, you know, we like to say we zig when others zag. And I can just tell you, you know, over the years, we've had these discussions. Do we need to change dress code or we do need to do this or do this? And, you know, we do have rules. We have policies. We have. But, man, letting people um, show themselves, because if we all these recognition programs and all these things, if 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 people are just themselves, um, then it feels real. But if we start these programs and. Um, I'll give you a good example. Probably one of the, uh, you know, our CEO every, almost every single day wears a cap and a baseball cap to the office. OK, um, you know why he does that? Because he he worked in a restaurant for 25 years and he wore a cap on the in the audience in the restaurant every single day. I'm telling you, that cap is now his symbol. It's, <laughs> it's no cards. Everybody knows it. And man, that's a powerful message because it's not about. Um, overdressing or what you are. It's just simple. It's authentic. And, and we started our, uh, we started our sustainability program about five years ago. And we, we based it on authenticity because we said, now we've never had it. Now, if we roll out this sustainability program, we have a fancy name and suddenly we start telling people you got to do X, you got to do Y, they're not going to believe any of it. And so it's like, we got to be true to ourselves. And then the People, because it kind of goes back to that that legendary food, legendary service. People are going to raise their eyes and get skeptical if you start being somebody you're not, and especially when your founder passes away, because everybody's antenna goes up and they say it's getting ready to change. Yeah. Oh boy, here we go! And I will tell you, a big part of that is protecting the culture from new when we hire new folks, and I just. I, I mean, you know, you bring in new folks, especially at a high level, and we always preach. It's like, you know, you don't make any decisions for a while. You got to feel the culture because that's how it slowly starts changing. Because what's authentic to us and our brand may not be authentic and may not where they've come from. And, and you can't get it watered down. Uh, and I'm so proud of how our team in the last almost three years have stayed true to who we are. Uh, you know, we've just put up a, a plaque in every all 700 restaurants that says it's a quote from our founder that says we're a people first company that just happens to serve steak. And so 
if we stay people first focus and a lot of people aren't, um, you know, and there's a final quote that I think is so awesome because it says, why is it that the people closest to the action have less power to make change when the people farthest from the action have all the power to make change? And that's where we have said always it's a bottom up pyramid. Um, the stores are first. Uh, and so that keeps us authentic. Because when we can say, you know what, we're going to change this menu and you have an managing partner say, are you an idiot? Here's what's going to happen if you change that menu. Have you looked at X, Y, Z? So to us, authentic means real and, uh, and having those tough, those real conversations and not thinking, you know, everything. Yeah. You know, I, I, I've seen those plaques. You know, I go to Texas Roadhouse and, and Bubba's 33 often, as you know. Actually, Travis knows every time I go because I send him a photo. <laughs> when yeah. I live in there. Um, you do have one dress code uh, policy, though, that I think, and that is if you wear a tie to the support center, they will cut it off. Yeah. <laughs> no, no ties allowed. Uh, you only have to cut off two or three and nobody comes in. Yeah. You know, it's so funny. I was going to wear like one of the most ugliest ties I own just just to have that experience. I just wanted to, I can't, to cut my tie off. But at any rate, so so Paula, you know, authenticity. I mean, you, you, you know, the great thing about a credit union is you don't have customers. They're members. Right. They're they're they're, they're part of the whole fabric. How, how does that play into the authenticity at Kitsap? You know, it with authenticity and our members, um, they are at the heart of the decisions we make. Um, they're at the heart of uh, who we hire. I listen to Travis about, you know, who you bring in is so important and how we reward. Um, and, you know, it's being explicit about it. Um, and really being, um, gosh, I don't know what more to say other than Travis had so many great stories. You're a fantastic storyteller, Travis. Um, but, you know, member experience is at the center of it. I think as we think about our community, which is in our vision statement, um, we define that as not just our members, however, we define it as our employees and the communities that we're working in and what we're committed to. So, you know, purpose and authenticity, what's very unique and authentic about Kitsap Credit Union is um, how we can build financial wellness in the community. So the work that we're doing out in high schools um, and, you know, that's a give back. That's a sense of purpose, making our community stronger. Um, as I'm working with our CEO today, um, as we look forward, how do we drive even stronger um, in an authentic way of um growing our employees, you know, we talk about continuous learning and development. And uh, we hope that's within Kitsap Credit Union. We're not a large organization, um, but we're doing it with the investment around getting folks growing either deeper in their skill set or, or moving up and, you know, changing that lens. It's okay if they leave the organization, um, but we'd like them, you know, to be able to provide also those career paths within Kitsap Credit Union. And so, I think that's it's those type of experiences that really hold up the mirror as to whether we're being authentic or not. Yeah. And, and the way you reinforce all that, obviously, is with recognition. So, you know, Partha, how have you seen your clients and whatnot through those systems and through those programs with recognition at the core to, to really reward that kind of authenticity? Yeah. So I think uh, I just want to touch one point on, on Travis' thing before I answer your question. Uh, so Travis said about the plaque, you know, people first, we just serve, by the way, we serve steak. You know, I think it's very important because how many companies over the last hundred years are doing the same stuff? You know, who knows, lab grown meat will be coming soon, right? right. There. So you have to move away from steak to something else uh, there. And only when you have these people, I mean, they will be adapting to this continuously changing things. I mean, I remember I worked in Nokia long back. They started with books, right? And, and then the mobile phones and everything. So I think the focus on the people needs to be there. Or, uh, coming back to your question on the uh, authenticity part. See, we see a lot mm -hmm. of companies totally, I mean, if once they hear today's, you know, uh, this webcast, I'm pretty sure oh, we should have a recognition program. Great, we should have a... But the material out there, okay, where do we start? Okay, many companies are mature, they know what to do, but most companies are not there. Okay, they don't know what to be done, where do we start from? 
organizational design, compen benefits, those are very standard, enough expertise, enough experience, enough consultants are out there, okay, whom you can take the help. But recognition programs, I find, what is the easiest thing? Okay, let's just give some budget, give out some rewards. Okay, that's the easiest thing to do. But actually designing an authentic recognition program is difficult for people, okay, where they, I mean, and we didn't start off thinking about that. We said, hey, we'll just give a tool. You have your programs, you take this tool, run it. We have actually now added a consulting or a service layer to that where we say we help you design your programs okay, based, ba uh, based on the best practices which we have seen. And authenticity, for example, one of the factors in authenticity is the clarity okay, uh, of why would someone want to be recognized in this program? I mean, I don't care about the Facebook birthday wishes. You know, it's just an automated birthday wishes. I don't care about Facebook wishing me on my birthday. So why should someone want to be recognized on this platform? What should I do to be recognized on that platform? That has to be very, very clear. Okay, That's what, when we help in the design of the program, we bring, we try to make it clear, or not clear, as in like, we try to make it very um, obvious to this uh, HR saying that this clarity has to be there. Okay, if, if otherwise, it will keep on changing that, you know, the, the, as again, Travis said, you know, someone further away from the de decision uh, or the action will be making the decision. The line managers are not going to implement that. The clarity has to be there. And, and I think, so we have this framework called the air framework, appreciation, incentivization, reinforcement, which we talked about, you know, with an emotional connect. So we put the emotional connect as a superscript. Okay. We mm -hmm. say you can do everything, but that's the force multiplier. Okay, that's the E, which is the superscript, which you can do everything. Okay, if you don't have the emotional thing, it's just an automated process. It's like the Facebook wishing you on your birthday. <laughs> so, uh, so, so that so we're we're trying to help in that in, in whatever way we can. Uh, to create that, you know, yeah. Overall. Uh, you know, it's so funny you mentioned that. I, you know, I'm, I've got a big following on LinkedIn, and I, I dread my birthday. <laughs> yeah. Literally, I get flooded. I literally get like six hundred. You know, I mean, um, don't know any of them, really. I mean, you know, uh, um, at any rate, yeah. You I, on can, uh -huh. can I just jump in on and add something that, that, that he just yeah. said that just made me, and we celebrate our failures here. So Texas Roadhouse, we always say we failed our way to success. Yeah. And so if you talk about authenticity and we're talking about these programs, so we have this program where you can recognize people in the restaurants and they go to the website and they get to use these points and they can buy swag. And so we're all proud of this program and it works great for the support center. And then you go out in the field and an operator says, so you know that the majority of our back of the house um, and front of the house, they don't uh, check their computer every day. They don't remember their login to get into the intranet. And, you know, it's so hard to say, hey, thank you. Great job. And then they have to check their email and they might check it six months later. So they said, can we come up with a card that's preloaded that I can put $20 on and you give it to them and we pay the taxes. So 20 is really $30. Great. And so they, and the operator said, I want to give this to the dish machine and he, he or she can scan it right there. No password, no sign in, and they can spend their points. Uh -huh. And it was like, holy cow, talk about uh, like, man, we're designing this program thinking everybody's sitting at a desk and an operator says, you guys are idiots. You got to do this. <laughs> and man, and it, so now it's like, that's where it all, if it comes together, you know, so you're speaking that same language. So anyway. Love yeah. Love that idea, Travis. Yes. Yeah, specificity and make it work for the people in your care. So this has been great. We're out of time. I'm afraid we're going to give each of you 20 seconds to summarize <laughs> what the, what you've learned today or what you want everybody to take away. Uh, Partha, we'll start with you. One, one quick learning from today. Focus on recognition, separate out the rewards from the recognition. Okay? Recognition is the more important part in the arena. Love that. Travis. Uh, um, purpose and recognition, we're not, as a society, people aren't getting it in their churches, their neighborhoods, their schools. If they can get it at work, what a great opportunity to bring people together. So true. That's great. Paula. I'd like to talk about purpose as just a, a great practice of inclusion and bringing unity. Um, amongst your team. Excellent. Beautiful. Great takeaways. Yeah, really from everybody. We can't thank you enough for your time. You know, you could be a lot of places you chose to be with us and all of you that are listening in. 
recognition. Let we always say more carrots, less sticks, but make sure you've got purpose behind it, that you're inclusive, you know, preach to the choir so the choir can preach to everybody else. I love that saying and really appreciate your time. Thanks to Vantage Circle for sponsoring uh, this, uh, this forum. We thank you so much, Partha. Um, Paula, Travis, Adrian. Thanks everybody. Thank, thank you. you. Appreciate it.